Hello and welcome to another episode in the series Rise of the Pi Woman. Today we will do a really interesting case study. Uh, today is 16 January, so it's winter, so it's a flu season. And a uh, fun uh, fact is that I had flu, uh, so I had flu from... Uh, uh, from Saturday until uh, Tuesday, so that's the reason why I didn't uh, uh, record new logs. And now I'm showing you uh, the case study uh, associated with uh, flu. So let's go and and see uh, what are we are going to do today. So influenza spread analysis. So influenza or flu. Viruses can be detected year-round in the United States, but historical data from the CDC has evidence that there is a seasonal component in the spread of the disease, being much more common during the fall and winter. CDC stands for Center for Disease Control and Prevention. It is one of the major operating components of the Department of Health and Human Services of the United States. At the first sight, a question pops up, is the cold responsible for you to get sick? So, is the cold responsible for you to get flu? You are a data scientist helping the CDC to answer these questions. There are two data sets available for this analysis. So, the number of deaths and the death rate associated with the influenza virus by state. And the second, the average temperature during the winter season by state. Our analysis should follow these steps. So first, load both datasets and merge them. Second, create a function that receives a temperature in Celsius and converts it to Fahrenheit. Third, create a function that receives a temperature in Fahrenheit and converts it to Celsius. Make both transformations in the same function, receiving as additional argument the type of conversion you want to perform. Four, apply the conversion to your data frame, representing the temperature in Fahrenheit. Five, calculate the person's correlation coefficient to determine if the number of deaths associated with influenza and the average temperature are correlated. Do the same thing to the death rate instead of absolute numbers. Six, create a function that receives the correlation coefficient calculated earlier and, inter and interrupts, interprets uh, its results, and seven, grab the relationship between number deaths associated with influenza and average temperature using a scatter plot. Do the same thing to the death rate instead of absolute numbers. So this case study isn't so easy. As you know, flu can be a really annoying, so it, it's normal that this data set is not easy. So you now know what we need to do. So let's go uh, in our Jupyter Notebook and uh, do this data set. Of course, uh, under, uh, under the, the link of, of this video, you can download uh, data sets and you can see the entire code on my GitHub. If you want to get immediate access to the data sets and everything that I share, you have to uh, subscribe to my email list, list and you have also link under the video. So in the next section, we will uh, do this analysis. So let's go. Hello, and let's go and do this flu analysis. So our first step, we have to import our libraries. So import libraries. And we will say import pandas as pd, then import numpy as mp uh, done we want matplotlib for visualization so import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and import seaborn as sns after that, we'll have, because uh, as we done in previous sections, 
we want our visualization to show under our uh, code so this will make it happen so matplotlib inline and okay let's uh, run it so the other other stuff we want to import we have we have to import our data sets so import our data sets uh, keep in mind that my data sets are in my Jupyter notebook so in order to call this pd.read csv file you have to upload the data set uh, under your uh, file in the Jupyter notebook so i will i will call this df df flu equals flu flu equals pd dot read csv then the brackets then we have okay okay so dot flu Neum pneumonia, so the first data set pneumonia dot csv, and we will run it. Then we have the another set, so we will call it temperature. So we will say df temperature equals pd dot read csv, then the bracket is the same way, so we will call it. Okay, so we'll call it, um, it's called average winter temperature dot CSV. So average winter temperature dot CSV. So DF temperature equals PD dot read CSV average winter temperature CSV. Okay, so we uploaded uploaded our 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 uh, data set. So now we want to see our data set. So we'll say df df flu dot head and see our data set first. So we can see we have the states that rate and date apps and it shows our the first five columns if we want to call uh, to call uh, the last for the last uh, five columns we will say df dot so tail and it will delivers our the last so we can see that we he have here 50 uh, 50 rows uh, yes you can see that it says uh, 49, but you have to know that Python goes from zero, so it's uh, 50 rows. Uh, we can do the same thing for for our other data set to see what we have there. So we can say df uh, df um, temperature. So df temperature dot, for example, first head. And we can do this the same. So we can see that we have the state and average Celsius, so the average temperature. And we can do the same with with uh, with tail. So we can say df temperature dot tail. And sorry, I did it wrong. So df temperature dot tail. Now we can see the last five columns the last five rows so we now know uh, our data set and what we are doing with them uh, so now what we are going to do so uh, <clears throat> so the first question we had in our data sets we have to merge our data so we will say uh, because we want to to have a really good data set in order to do uh, to, to see if there is a correlation between the temperature and the flu so our first question will be so our first question will be so first question was merge merge data okay so we will say like this df equals df okay so df equals 
I can maybe uh, zoom this so you can see better. So we can we can say so df equals uh, df equals pd dot merge then in the bracket uh, df dot flu comma df dot temperature comma on state so we we did this on state so we merged them on the state why i will explain it now so on the state so on the state why because it's the same column so and our our um, it will uh, it will see so we are doing pandas merge so it will see because you can see here that we have in the temperature we have state and then we have in 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 the flu also we have state so it will just add the another uh, another uh, column here so so that's the reason why are we doing that or why are we merging our data set on on the state so let's go and uh, run this and now just check if we did the right right merging so df had and see if we done it properly. So you can see now that we are done it properly. So as I said, we now have average Celsius and we have the states. So our uh, Python recognized how to do it and he merged it on the on the really good place. So uh, the second is we have to create a function to convert our temperature from from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Uh, so we will say we will say create a function to convert temperature okay so we will say like this so the de de define convert c to f temperature uh, then we will say return temperature and multiply by this is like so you you so when you calculate when you multiply with this and plus and uh and plus 32 you will get the same same for uh, for the temperature for celsius you will get the same for the fahrenheit so you will we will do this okay so the next step so to see the result to see if we are correct so we will say result uh, equals convert c to fahrenheit of course and then we will add for example maybe 25 okay so we will say um print result okay print result and to see so 77 so if we so we can see like 20 uh, multiply by 1.8 plus 32 we can see it's 77 so let's do um differently so so let, let's uh, do differently we can see we can do this uh, differently so we can say print convert c to f then in the bracket we can say again 25 and you can you can get the same uh, result so you can use one of them i just wanted to to, to give you uh, a few examples how you can do the same same stuff uh, so our third question is we have to create a function to convert the other way so we will do the same function but the other way as i did this uh, how you can print the result so you can choose it whatever you want and whatever you prefer so this is just for the learning purposes so our uh, our third for today is we need to create so we need to create sorry so create um, a function uh, to convert 
but the other way. So the second way, okay. And then we will do this. So we will say like this. So we will say like this define convert convert C to F, so Fahrenheit. Then we will uh, have in the bracket temperature. And then we will say uh, return temperature minus 32 and then we will divide it by 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 1.8 so 1.8 so it's the same way but we are doing instead of plus and multiply we're doing uh, minus 32 and divided by divided by uh, by 1.1 so so that's it so we will do that and we will now run it and then we want also to see the results so we will say print convert C C to F and then in the bracket 25 again yes so no we can say we, we will now do this uh, other way so we will say 77 so we will say 77 and now we will got 25 so you can it's also for the testing purposes because now you can see that we did it right right because or maybe the, uh, these uh, all two answers are are all wrong. So, but the 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 uh, but the percentage of it is like zero point zero 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 one. So so we are right. So now uh, we want to do also a different way. So we will define the convert temperature and we will use the if and uh, uh, elif uh, statement. So. Let's go. So we will say de 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 define convert temperature. Then we will add temperature and then unit. And then we will say if unit equal equals F. Sorry, I forgot. Then return temperature temperature minus thirty two, and then the same that we done in the previous section in the previous uh, line. So and then we will say elif elif unit equal equal c. So return, sorry, return temperature 1.8 plus, so 1.8 plus, okay, 1.8 plus, sorry, 1.8 plus 32, all or else. What can we say else course return error error so you, you can see now that we defined all the ways so and the one and the other one in, in, in the same in the same line of the code so we define the covert temperature in units. So we said if unit is Fahrenheit, then return temperature in this way. If uh, is unit in, in, in Celsius, then return temperature in this way. Else it's an error. So we can go and, and run this and then we can uh, see if we are right. So we will say print and then we will we will do this. So we will say convert uh, convert temperature convert temperature and then uh, we will have in the bracket so 25 uh, and then C okay and then we can see 77 so it's 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 fine so it's good so you can see so if if unit is C then convert it and then it's if unit is Fahrenheit so we want to convert from C 
to Fahrenheit, then we use use this. But if we want to convert from the other one, so we will say if we do the same way, but another way, so we will say print in the bracket. So convert. So convert temperature. So we will say now uh, 77 and then we will say F and we have one more bracket because you saw that I accidentally and we can say 25 so it's good and we can see also like we can add some uh, some other value and we can see if it will um, print an error so let's say convert temperature and then we will say like um, 77 uh, and then we will say probably like maybe F no sorry because of the we can say M like mania and then we can see if it's error so it's error so mania is error <laughs> funny stuff so we did it in the in, so we did it correctly so let's go and ask for the another question in, in, in from our case study so See, so in the fourth question, we have to convert our column from Celsius. So we have our uh, column uh, average Celsius, and we want to conver convert it to, to Fahrenheit. So we want to have it in Fahrenheit. So we will do it now. So let's go. So let's go. So the fourth step is, of course, fourth step is convert um column column so average tells 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 you into fahrenheit so i will say f because it's it's very really tough for me to to write it down so uh, i will do this so i will do like df then we'll have that med medium uh, brackets and I will say average Fahrenheit okay and I will say equals to NP none so I first have I want first to add a, a column and you have none values so I will okay so we can see now if to, to see if I did it properly so let's go and see that so you can see now that i added uh, another column called average fahrenheit and it has all values are none so so now what we will do so we will in place or or convert uh, our uh, column from celsius to fahrenheit so we will use four so four e four e in range uh, for e in la range, so length, then, sorry, so length, then, uh, df, and then uh, have one more bracket, sorry. Uh, then we will, okay, so we will say, like, so df average Fahrenheit converts the temperature of Celsius. So we can add a comment here, so we will say, like, df dot average average Fahrenheit if I'm not uh, telling the proper uh, pronunciation of, of Fahrenheit so sorry because in my country we use Celsius so so and sometimes when I saw on my mobile phone uh, Fahrenheit I'm what I'm what like what so sorry about that so convert temperature So df dot average sorry average Celsius then the bracket e and then we'll say c and we will finish our bracket so we will say df df dot lock E, comma, so average foreign heights equals 
convert temperature then we will say df dot average celsius then in the bracket e and then we have comma and then we have c so df dot lock if you don't understand what is df dot lock you can uh, look and see what is for use but keep in mind that um, you have to practice this and when you practice it you will know when you need to use df dot lock but for example for the purposes when you want to, to need to convert a column in one to another you will always use this type of, of function so let's go and run it and now we want to drop uh, drop our uh, column because we don't need any more uh, column average Celsius. So you will when you need to drop some of the columns like we did for uh, house pricing prediction for uh, missing values. So you will you will add like df uh, drop and then is the same same way of doing. So when you learn uh, first time uh, drop, you will know for every time again. So foreign 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 uh, height and then we will say convert convert temperature in the bracket df dot average celsius and then as i mentioned in 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 the in the comment so and then define the c that's it and then we will run this. So Metabridge does not support it item assignment. Sorry. Uh, so let me see what it didn't do right. So df df. Sorry, I I added. So we don't need to drop Fahrenheit. We need to drop Celsius. That's normal. Sorry, my my mistake. So Celsius, I uh, did the previous stop. That happens when you do live coding. So sorry. So df drop average average Celsius. Then one in place equals true. That's it. So we will run this now. And it's fine and uh, we drop our 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 place so now we want to see the correlation between this um, this correlation between so the temperature and correlation between the flu so we will use the columns uh, death rate date apps and this uh, temperature so we can see we can also uh, now do the head to see how our looks like so you can see that we drop 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 the average celsius because you can see that we previously had the average celsius here now we don't have it so we did it properly so the next section will be the correlation so our next step is correlation So for those of you who will uh, subscribe to my email list, I will send you uh, like a summary of explanation what is correlation. Uh, and that's enough for you uh, to know all from theoretical aspect when you are doing a correlation. I had like a regression and correlation like at my faculty. So for me, it was like a piece of cake when I uh, when I was learning uh, first time machine learning but for those of you who don't have uh, like background in statistics and and it's not familiar with you don't be afraid because everything you can learn if you want to learn and i will give you just a a couple of things that you have to uh, to uh, to learn and also if you want to learn more you can send me a message and i will uh, I, and i will suggest you a couple of books that you can uh, uh, read uh, so let's go and do the correlation. So, okay. So correlation. So we will say mp dot 
correlation coefficient df dot average foreign height df dot df dot that rate and we will add so we will add here zero and one zero and one and we want to see the correlation between between these two so it's 0 0.304 so we can see that correlation be between the average Fahrenheit and that rate is 0 0.330. I will, uh, we will discuss after that. Uh, we will create a function to interpret the, our results. So you, you will see if this means that it's uh, like a perfect negative, strong negative, moderate negative, weak negative, and so on. And I will give uh, the explanation about every of uh, this this um, correlation. Uh, what does it, does it mean when it's a perfect negative, strong negative, moderate negative, and so on? So let's go and do for the another one. So np dot correlation coefficient df dot average Fahrenheit dot df dot so that abs. And we will use the same, so 0 and 1, 0 and 1. And then we will see the correlation between, so it's 0 0.28. So, so, so that's the correlation between these two, uh, these two columns. And, in, in, and now we will uh, create a function to interpret our results. So, so our last section here is interpreting our results. So we will create a function function to interpret the results. Let's go and create a function to inter interpret the results. So first of all, I want to, to give you some background about the correlation so we we have a correlation co coefficient called r in statistics the correlation coefficient measures the strength and direction of a linear re re relationship between two variables on scatter plot the value of r is always between uh, plus one and negative one to interpret its value see which of the following values to correlation r is the closest one so exactly uh, negative one is a uh, perfect negative linear relationship uh, minus uh, 0 0.70 is a uh, is a strong negative linear relationship minus 50 is a moderate relationship then minus 30 a, a weak negative linear relationship uh, zero is no linear relationship uh, plus uh, 0.30 is a weak positive linear relationship uh, plus 0.5 is a a uh, moderate positive relationship plus 0.7 is a strong positive line relationship and exactly one is a perfect uh, positive uh, linear relationship. If the scatter plot doesn't indicate there is at least somewhat of a linear relationship, the correlation doesn't mean much. Uh, why measure the amount of linear relationship if there isn't enough uh, one to speak of? However, you can take the idea of no linear relationship two ways. First, if no relationship at all exists, calculating the correlation doesn't make sense because correlation only applies to linear relationship. And second, if a strong relationship exists but it's not linear, the correlation may be misleading because in some cases a strong curved relationship exists. That's why it's critical to examine the scatter plot first. So we will uh, make um, the scatter plot. And then we will see if we have if we have a, a correlation, so relationship. So and one more tip. So how close is it close enough to uh, negative one and, and and positive one to indicate a strong enough linear relationship? So most statisticians like to see 
correlation beyond at least uh, positive 0.5 or negative 0.5 before getting too excited about them. So don't expect a correlation to always be 0.99, however, because remember these are real data and real data aren't perfect. So theoretically uh, it will be a perfect, but in, in the practice, in the real life, uh, data isn't, isn't uh, perfect. And the beauty is in, is, is exactly in that. So now we will create a function to inter interpret these results that I mentioned. So let's go. So we will say define interpret so core coefficient. So we have then in the bracket value. Then we will say if value equals 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 minus minus one then print of course as I said perfect sorry I have to add this perfect negative okay then so we can say perfect negative relationship relationship okay then we can say alif. So it should go here. Alif value greater than so greater than minus minus one minus one and value. is um, smaller than and equal negative 0.5 no negative uh, 0.7 okay the first one then print strong negative relationship so then we will print strong negative relationship and then we will say elif value so is um, minus is is negative 0.7 and value is uh, less than and equal to negative 0.5 so then print weak negative of course yeah so it will be weak negative relation relationship uh, then elif value um, so elif value is so this one with uh, between the seven and uh, negative o, o, negative zero point seven and negative zero point five is a more moderate negative, so it won't be weak. So this is moderate negative, and then if value is greater than zero point negative zero point five zero point five and value is uh, less than and equal to uh, negative negative 0.3 then print um, weak negative um, elif Elif value is greater than so greater than negative two point three and um, less than and equal less than and equal to the O point so positive O point three.
so then prints then prints so no relationship so no relationship then we have elif so now value so value is greater than so value is greater than 0.3 and value is less than and equal to 0.5 yes so then we will, we will say we will say print then we will say print weak positive weak positive relationship then we have elif value greater than 0.5 and value um, is less than and equal so less than and equal to 0.7 and then we will print so we will print moderate positive relationship so we will print okay moderate positive re relationship okay then elif value so greater than 0.7 and value is less and equal to 1 yeah so then we will say print strong positive relationship and we have to add So yeah, I forgot the packets. So here and here. Sorry. So strong. So print, print strong, strong positive relationship, and then we have elif value, and then we have elif value equals equals one. Then print print um, perfect positive relationship, and of course we have to add this important so else print error. And that's it so what did I do so before the hmm, minus mm, negative one so elif value negative 0.3 and value and value No, uh, and so I forgot to so value and value okay so it will be fine now so now it's fine so we want to for example now we will test it so interpret for example so we can say now we can say now so interpret in Birds. correlation coefficient for example one and please say what so strong positive relationship so for example now we can we can say we can say for example 
0.9, so 0.9, and then hmm, strong positive relationship again. Then we can test another one. So for example, we can test zero. Yeah. So I will just I will just copy and okay now I will just copy and paste and I will say okay zero and please say something so no relationship again I will say I will say for example 0.3.1 and let's say weak positive relationship and I can say also like I can add here no number like M and it will say so no so uh, sorry uh, some number so I can say maybe like 0 0.5 and then weak positive relationship so we want to make uh, so the scatter plot so we will do sns dot reg plot um, correlation coefficient coefficient so we will say mp dot correlation coefficient df dot average Fahrenheit uh, comma df dot that rate and we will see, and we will <clears throat> And we will add here so uh, 0 and 1 okay and now we want to see so uh, model seaborn has not a true red plot so what I did so it's seems red plot yes it has so correlation oh sorry so that's the problem so it has to be hmm, my mistake. Okay, so making a SNS dot reg plot, and I will say x equals. I was doing something else today, so <laughs> that's the reason. So average Fahrenheit. So as we as and so and y equals that. Apps. So we will see that what is the correlation between these two columns. So and data equals df. Okay. X equals Fahrenheit. Y that apps. So here we have that apps, and now it will be fine. So now we can see is there a correlation between these two variables, okay? So we can see that, so we can see that you have that this uh, a lot of these dots are uh, are from this trend line. So that means that there is not a correlation between between these two these two parameters. And let's see the same stuff for the. Uh, for another, for another, so for another place. So I will, I will just copy and and, and paste this. Sorry, so what I did. So okay. And now I will just copy and paste it here. Sorry, I have to do it again. So okay, sns dot reg plot x equals average Fahrenheit Fahrenheit and y uh, equals that rate and then we will say data equals df and let's see if there is a correlation between them again I did something wrong so again I forgot this line okay so keep in mind that i'm doing this live so i'm coding live so you can see even here you can see that there is not much 
relationship between them also so you can you can have that you can see that there is no so they are not correlated at all so for the first one maybe this one is not correlated at all um so that's rate with a with a <clears throat> with a temperature and on the other hand so on the other hand for that first first place for that first we can see that there is a, some kind of relationship but you can say that it's a weak relationship so it's probably between between like it's between like like 0.3 and 0.5 so you can see that it's a weak so that's it so we can say that temperature don't have anything with uh, with with flu so we have our answer i hope that you like that you like this uh, case study today if you want to uh, to get the data set and the entire code please subscribe to my email list uh, thank you for watching this tutorial today uh, please like it comment it uh, also share uh, and give me a feedback also uh, share with someone from data science world until tomorrow happy machine learning